Right behind me is the San Francisco Bay. This area will be severely affected by sea level rise associated with global climate change. It's difficult to predict exactly how much sea levels will rise as it's tied to how much our planet warms, but conservative estimates have somebody standing in this spot up to their waist in water by the year 2100, and more dramatic scenarios have the water up over their heads. Of course, this is a global phenomenon. Sea level rise could submerge land currently home to up to 760 million people worldwide if global temperatures rise 4 degrees Celsius by the year 2100. So what are cities and city planners going to do to minimize the potential devastation? Well, the best solution to this is to, you know, stop pumping carbon into our atmosphere, the thing that causes climate change and sea level rise. Unfortunately, planners can't force certain countries to sign certain climate change treaties. <clears throat> so instead, planners have to plan for the future scientists anticipate based on overwhelming data. And that future is pretty bleak, and also more complicated than you might think. Sea level rise isn't just the story of oceans getting higher and higher year after year, though that is something to be concerned about, don't get me wrong. But the sea level rises during storm surges associated with large storms and hurricanes, and sea level rise can make those worse. Superstorm Sandy and its 4-meter storm surge could become the new normal on the eastern seaboard of the United States. Once in 100-year flooding events could come every 20 years, or even more frequently than that. Sea levels also rise due to the natural movement of the tides, and again, sea level rise due to climate change can make these worse. The poster child for rising tides is Venice, who has increasingly had to deal with aqua alta high tides that inundate the beautiful but low-lying city. The city's geography makes it susceptible to high tide events, both due to its lagoon setting and location at the end of the Adriatic Sea, where wind blows high water right into the lagoon. But sea level rise will exacerbate these high tides. In addition, Venice is dealing with subsidence, defined as the gradual sinking of landforms to a lower level. Basically, the water is going up and Venice is going down. How is the city, a World Heritage Site, chosen to solve this problem? With engineering. There are three inlets to Venice's lagoon, and engineers have designed a set of gates for each inlet that keep those high tides out. The gates can handle a three-meter surge, which should keep Venice dry for a while. The gates will be fully functional in 2018. Venice solved its sea level rise problems through engineering, and that's pretty common. Many cities across the world protect themselves from floods with dikes and levees. It seems pretty obvious. Build a wall and keep the water out. One half of the Netherlands lies below sea level, and the Dutch have built 350 miles of dikes to protect their country from the sea. And that's how Shanghai is dealing with sea level rise. Shanghai means above the sea, but that may not be the case for long. Shanghai, like Venice, is slowly sinking, which is a problem because the city is only 3 to 4 meters above sea level currently. It's also a problem because it's located where the Yangtze River and the Huangpu River meet the Yellow Sea. There's a lot of water around, is what I'm saying. Some projections have half of Shanghai flooded by 2100. That's a huge problem, as Shanghai is currently home to 24 million people and will continue to grow between now and then. To prevent flooding, Shanghai has gone all in on an engineering solution, and it has built hundreds of kilometers of seawalls and levees to protect low-lying areas. Engineered solutions are one way to solve the problem, but they come with drawbacks. They can be expensive and unsightly. There's an alternative to this gray infrastructure, and it's called green infrastructure. Green infrastructure can take the form of new natural barrier islands and restored or constructed wetlands that can reduce erosion and wave heights, both of which would also reduce property damage. Of course, planning ahead for climate change could minimize the risk to homes, businesses, and critical infrastructure. Planners are now planning for resilience, a community's ability to bounce back and recover from adversity, particularly the kind of adversity that comes from climate change. Resiliency planning is a big topic, but there are some basic ideas that are employed to reduce the impact of floods and storms on the urban environment. Coastal plants often call for one or more of these mitigation measures. Building critical electrical, water, and transportation infrastructure on higher ground, restricting development in flood-prone areas such as barrier islands, securing funding to move critical infrastructure that already exists in low-lying areas, and in rare cases, buying homes and businesses in low-lying areas so they can be vacated. This coastal retreat would save money in the long term as these buildings would not need to be repaired or rebuilt after every flood, but it's politically difficult to tell people they should leave their homes and desert their neighborhoods. Now, resiliency has become a bit of a planning buzzword, sort of like the new sustainability, but it's so popular now because the threat of sea level rise is no longer abstract. It's here. Miami Beach in South Florida is a prime example of this. It's built on a barrier island with unique geology. The porous limestone beneath the city allows seawater to bubble up into the sewer system and onto roads during high tides. 
These are called sunny day floods and are happening more frequently as the sea level rises. The city has spent $300 million to install pumps in the parts of the city that flood the most. But as sea levels continue to rise, they will need to install pumps throughout the city. Condo towers continue to be built in Miami Beach, and many are being built with washout floors, bottom levels that can withstand flooding without compromising the structural integrity of the building. All of these measures may not be enough if sea levels continue to rise according to some of the most dire predictions. Responding to sea level rise will likely be the biggest issue facing coastal cities over the next 100 years, and the stakes and water couldn't be higher. Thanks for watching. At this point, you might be asking yourself, is my house safe from sea level rise? Well, I put a link in the description to an interactive map where you can put in your address and see how your house would do under different sea level rise scenarios. So best of luck.